Have you ever been told by a device that your Wi-Fi sucks? Or your spouse that your Wi-Fi sucks? Or your roommates that your Wi-Fi sucks? Unfortunately, I've been going through that recently and I've had enough of it. So while networking may be the weakest thing that I have when it comes to tech, I am at least smart enough to figure out consumer products and uh, that's what we're gonna be doing today. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be upgrading my Wi-Fi through a couple of means that are, well, very affordable and uh, hopefully pretty easy to do. And even cooler, I'm gonna make network attached storage a thing. So grab your Cat6 and uh, let's get right into it. Hello and welcome, my name is Wolfie. You're watching Greater Than Pi and today we're actually gonna be doing something a little bit uh, different. I'm gonna have to get into these boxes, uh, set this up, and hopefully I will be able to create, uh, well, a better Wi-Fi. I will make the Wi-Fi good. <laughs> but to do that, let's kind of explain what we have here on our table and what we're actually doing. So right here, we actually have a Wi-Fi 6E router. Now, Wi-Fi 7 has come out and it's expensive. It's like $250 for, I think, the same level of router I have here uh, in Wi-Fi 7. And most of our devices are going to cap out well before Wi-Fi 6E. Additionally, the headset that uh, I desperately want to test wirelessly uh, requests specifically an access point with Wi-Fi 6E, which this will be. Now, TP-Link, I it, honestly, Never had really heard of them before this, but when looking around DR forums and, uh, well, more recent forums, I've found that they come up a lot. Um, apparently they are both budget friendly and very, very solid. So this will be my first time looking at a router from them, but we're not even really gonna be using it as a router, I don't think, because of how ATT works. ATT, uh, my ISP, unfortunately, I think requires the use of their router as a modem. So it's probably gonna require me to yeah, set this to access point mode, but we'll find out once we get set this. So let's get in here first. I know very glorious unboxing here. We're unboxing a router, but hey, you know, someone might actually be curious because this is like Amazon's number one selling router right now, which is kind of crazy. Uh, I guess I should probably talk before I get in here what this thing actually comes with. This is a Wi-Fi 6E router, which comes with uh, the One Mesh technology, which is their internal mesh networking system. It kind of explains on the box here the difference between the two bands, between 5 gigahertz, 6 gigahertz, and 2.5 gigahertz. There's apparently a built-in VPN, which I'm not exactly sure how that is going to work. Um, actually a pretty powerful processor in here, which is good because we're going to be attaching a network drive uh, along with the ability to actually run network drives through uh, things such as the um, USB port. So lots of really, really cool features. I don't need anything industrial or expensive such as Linus Tech Tips, but yeah, let's get into it. Inside the box, we got a box that opens like a cake. And that box contains the router. Wow. <laughs> this is the most riveting thing I've ever unboxed ever. It's wide. Oh, it came with cable. It came with a patch cable. I bought that $13 cable from Best Buy for no reason. All right, nothing else in the box. Should I open the box before I did that? Could save myself 13 bucks. Okay, so uh, how does this open? Ugh. Try not to damage things. All right, so as you can see, we got lots of antennas. And uh, this will help us actually get throughout the apartment. Luckily, I did not break the cardinal sin number one, which is uh, put the router in the corner. Uh, so that's not really the problem. Problem here is mostly gonna be speed and bandwidth. We actually have our direct WLAN port, WAN, port, <laughs> uh, LED button, WTPS, Wi-Fi, uh, reset switch, power button. Ooh, I like the power buttons, kind of chunky. And then of course a USB port, which will allow us to do the whole network drive thing. Uh, also along with the bottom is uh, four LAN ports. So if you wanted to use it that way, 
it would work. And if your ISP allowed you to, that'd be great. In this box, probably power adapter, is power adapter. Little patch cable, what do we got on here? Cat 5E, so actually I got a Cat 6 cable myself, so uh, that's not bad. And I'm gonna have to look at this documentation, but I'm 99% sure what, oh, uh, there's an app. Oh no. Okay, we'll figure that out later. Uh, this looks like this replaces the WD My Books. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is just a tower and enclosure with a USB cord that connects to it, its own power, and a big old drive on the inside. All right. And I think I'm right. So, yep, we got a power adapter, we got a USB adapter, and then we got this sexy peel. Okay, that wasn't, that was kind of scratchy. So this will sit next to this, and will be our network drive. Now this is up to eight to terabytes. Actually, this is the eight terabyte version. It's not up to eight terabytes. It's eight terabytes with overhead, okay? And there's our cables. Cool. So between these two, we should have everything we need to upgrade this Wi-Fi. So, now all we need to do is patch in with a laptop, configure some stuff, and uh, see if I can get this working. All right guys, it is the next day, and if you take a look right over here, uh, she is a set up. And not only is she set up, she's working, and she is working well. Pretty much everything I wanted to do was very self-explanatory. So let me walk you through the process here. The first step is just the same thing that you do for any router, which is disconnect your old one, power down any modems, and then power them all back up with everything connected. You plug power into this, you plug ethernet into this, and then you plug ethernet into that, and then you turn them both on and it just works for the most part. There's an app you have to download or don't really have to. You can actually go in directly with a PC, but the app made it very, very, very simple and very straightforward walks you through the entire process of setting up your network, including creating a network name, a password, and it does that for both of the versions of the network. Once it's up, it asks you to test it, which worked flawlessly, literally first time, and then it runs a sort of check to see if there's any other things that might be hindering the Wi-Fi signal so that it can switch its own signals around to give you the best outcome. It, honestly, great feature, and it did work out of the box because when I say that this is a massive improvement over the Nighthawk, I mean this is a massive improvement. You can go to any corner of our apartment here and get full signal at all times. It's fast and it's reliable. You also get the extra benefit of using the app for, well, sysadmin stuff, such as resource management and the ability to uh, check data usage and clients on the network, which not something I'm going to be personally doing very often, but it's very nice that it is there. And it does notify you if somebody joins the network uh, for the first time. So if you are worried about maybe some people maybe possibly leeching off of your network, it's an option. But past its data security features, there were some other really cool things inside of here, including the ability to spin this off into a guest network and then other slower networks if, well, you require them. And of course, you could set this router directly to access point mode, which would mean that you could connect multiple in the same household in order to get more coverage. Of course, if you are gonna be doing that, the best way to do it is to hardwire them together and not necessarily have them as relays that's like the least ideal way to do it, but either way, it is a really cool option for bigger spaces. Ours is perfectly covered with just the one, and uh, that's probably because it's a single floor, you know, fairly big unit, but not really the worst. So point is, it's got really good coverage and it was really easy to set up. But as I mentioned earlier, there is a little bit more to this because, well, there's also the the hard drive external hard drive plugged in which this is a powered external hard drive which if you're doing this kind of thing i recommend but essentially my goal was to create a network drive that could be accessed by all the computers inside of this apartment and that was so simple it hurt <laughs> because all i had to do was plug this all in plug it into the usb port on the side and then go into the data management from the computer side. It couldn't use the app for this and just kind of configure it from there. And there are additional functions that allow you to make this a cloud drive that can be accessed from the internet. 
which is kind of crazy. Of course, you do want to set a password, which you can do from the router's management software directly. So you don't have to go through any weird convoluted things. It's actually really, really cool, really, really intuitive. And if you're doing this as a home user, I honestly think that this is probably easier than setting up a NAS. And I do think that you probably could take this a step further and make something called a DAS, which is a direct attached storage that is attached to your router. That would work that way. Of course, though, I don't know how the security is on that since, well, it is a single password and username system. Now let's give it a really quick test when it comes to, well, using the uh, local file share. So we're over here. Um, let's actually access the file. So what's good about a network file is that you can access it from just about anywhere. So just like any other file, you just need to come up in the file explorer. Uh, you can connect in with the direct link into the router, which is a TP-Link uh, Wi-Fi.net or the TP-Link. Oh, yeah, that's specifically if you're going from the wireless. But from there, we've got plenty of files to work with. Uh, so let's transfer over something from my greater than pi folder. Let's take a raw file from my ingest folder. That's from my... Uh, from the R8. So we'll take actually the beginning of this video and we're gonna go ahead and transfer that over into the network drive. So, oh. All right, we are copying. Now you'll notice that the GUI is not actually the same as Windows. I don't know if you can see that very well. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. So that's because this GUI is actually from the router, not from Windows. So it's transferring over this file. It says about 11 minutes. And this is a six, 6 6.68 gigabyte file, 4K footage. I think it's going faster than um, it thinks it's going to take. That was 25 seconds from the point that I had hit that stopwatch. We're going to reset the timer and go. So now we're just pulling from the drive to another computer on the same network. Everything's wired, so... I would expect this to be uh, relatively fast. It's saying 10 minutes. I have already learned not to believe it. So <laughs> let's see what happens. That moves really fast, actually. Yeah, it's six minutes so far for the entire recording. And I think this is actually gonna be a minute. Less than a minute, 58 seconds, 59, just about a minute. So we were able to transfer a 6.68 gigabyte file in about a minute. That's a pretty good throughput, actually. And let's see if she plays. I think she does. Yeah, that's some raw footage. Let me just go ahead and open up speedtest.net. Ready? Go. There's currently no other users on the network. So we're looking at... So we got a download of 540.9 and an upload of 349.8 from a wireless connection. Latency is about 17 milliseconds, which uh, according to Google is, uh, and I quote, very fast. <laughs> that is really what it says there. So yeah, I mean, we are standing literally right here, but for a wireless connection, that ain't half bad. With all of that said, how do I feel about this upgrade? Well, my networking setup in my apartment, now you can already kind of see, the, the cables that are kind of running up there. Uh, let's just say I've always been a heavy proponent of wired connections. That is because when it comes down to it, with as many PC clients as I've got inside of this apartment, uh, just for reference, there are three over here and then three back here. So there are six desktop PC clients. That's not including the Razer Blade, or any of the other devices I have, like the RG Ally or the Steam Deck, that are also kind of running at the same time. So because of that, the way that I have my entire thing set up is I actually have wired connections going to the PCs. There's a switch over by them that is where they break out from. So there are three clients there on one switch and then three clients there on one switch. Um, all of those are now running through this TP-Link router. And the wireless connections are for all of the phones, the Steam Decks, RG Allies, the laptops. 
And that has worked fairly well, even with the Nighthawk. The problem is the Nighthawk, it was stuck at a speed of 2.5 and this base speed is five. So it's double that. Plus there is a much stronger 6G uh, that it can access uh, specifically through devices that have Wi-Fi 6E or Wi-Fi 7. So I only have one device that actually has Wi-Fi 6E built into it. And that is the uh, headset that I've been kind of testing and reviewing lately, which is the Vive Focus Vision. And when it comes to the Vive Focus Vision, honestly, that was a really interesting tech demo into how the faster Wi-Fi connection actually is helping everything along. Now I might make some adjustments to my networking. Uh, specifically, I might switch the gigabit switches to 2.5 gigabit switches because I do have 2.5 on both of my desktops. And if we're going internally, the fact that we're going out at a gigabit doesn't really change too much. That extra data being moved around might be beneficial, especially when doing something like the wireless connection to the headset. But I was able to play things like Beat Saber and Pistol Whip, albeit with a little bit of a delay built in. And it wasn't perfect. I would not play competitive Beat Saber over wireless. And I wouldn't do that with a MetaQuest headset either, but it still was doable and it was very, very cool and very, very stable. And I can't stress how important stability is when it comes to home networking. The people who live in your, your home don't know necessarily about all of this stuff. And so for this to be as easy as it is, I really do think that pretty much anybody here could have done this, which gives this sort of a heavy recommendation from us, despite me not really being as proficient in networking equipment as I feel like I could be. It's easy to use. It worked for an advanced user. And I think it's simple enough for a beginner to actually pick up and do. So yeah, this worked. It worked well. This project went better than I thought it was. I thought this was gonna be a multi-weekend project. It was a single day project. That is, that is how well it worked. But that is where I'm ending it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you coming to check out this video and I'll see you in the next one. We're probably gonna be doing something a little bit more uh, tech related in the same wheelhouse that we normally do, you know, tech gaming stuff. Um, subscribe if you're not, and I'll see you in the next one. Wolfie, out.